Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome NBC News journalist Ann Kirby. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Congratulations to Milan and also to hear her and uh, Hillary Clinton. It's a, it's a really beautiful uh, to see their sisterhood and how important that is in, in, in success. Um, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and make a trail. The words of Emerson perfectly describe our next honoree, Manal Yaish Zrei. For she is a woman who builds a lot of trails. Manal is a partner at a private consulting firm in Palestine. She is also the kind of person who is always looking for an opportunity to be a force for good. She is quick to recognize when there is a need, and she is unreserved in her response. In 2005, she accepted an invitation from the US consulate in Jerusalem to attend a conference in T Tunisia for businesswomen who, across the Middle East. And what she saw really inspired her. She saw women working together, meeting together, uh, conducting business and, and learning from each other. And so she decided that this idea could help Palestine. She launched what she called the Business Women Forum. She used her own office and also got support from Vital Voices and also the Middle East Partnership Initiative of the Department of State. A year later, her forum became a member of the broader Middle East and North Africa Business Women's Network, which is a partnership of Vital Voices and also ExxonMobil. And this partnership is dedicated to promoting women's entrepreneurship in the region. Now, to understand the audacity of Manal's effort, you should consider this. At the time, in Palestine, women owned only 5% of all businesses. Manal knew that women working together could amplify their efforts and amplify their impact and drive economic growth in their communities. And she was right. The forum has grown from four members to more than 70 and last year alone supported more than 800 women entrepreneurs starting and growing businesses. But that wasn't enough for Manal. She wanted to address the critical shortage of housing and jobs in Palestine. Unemployment there hovers around 24%, and it's even higher for young people and also for women. She could see that the years of conflict and occupation had dimmed hopes for the future for so many people. So Banal joined her business partner, his name is Bashar Masri, in a massive project to jumpstart dreams and to redefine the landscape. And so they're creating what's called Rawabi. It is a modern, planned city that will house 40,000 people. And it's being designed and built by Palestinians themselves, creating jobs for thousands of people along the way. Let's learn more. In my personality, I am a risk taker. Building Rawabi is not something easy. Uh, at the beginning, we thought that it's a crazy idea. At the same time, there is a need. We saw how real estate was booming in the Arab world, but most of the uh, companies were focusing on the rich and the tourism. They were not building for the middle and the low income, which is the vast majority of the Arabs, of course, at least 300 million. Manal was the first person to say, I like this. Let's move ahead with it. Let's move out to the middle of nowhere and create a city. It's actually the largest investment ever in Palestine. And she has made an important contribution to that. Uh, and, and through it, uh, I believe, to the cause of sustainable development in Palestine. When there is economic development, doctors will develop their clinics. Business people will develop new projects. They will hire more employees. They will make profit. They will start paying taxes to the government, which leads the government not to depend on donors' money. What we really need, uh, first and foremost, is to have an economy that can generate enough jobs. Anytime you can fill a need using a local supplier, you create a lot of jobs. To build Rawabi, we're gonna use between 20 million to 24 million building blocks, 70,000 uh, kilometers of pipes, uh, over 30,000 doors, over 50,000 windows, 
if all the uh, Palestinian companies and the manufacturer work with their 100% capacity, they will not match the need. Accordingly, we got the idea of uh, establishing a fund to be invested in a Palestinian company uh, to help them improve their capacity. Once we started uh, working with Rawabi, uh, we became one of the biggest, even the biggest uh, woodwork in the, uh, company in Palestine. We have a 26 employee and uh, the plan to have by end of this year around 40 employee. Usually we have five to six clients in the pipeline. Nowadays we have 38. We have to keep developing the economy. We cannot just stop and waiting for peace and then start working. Peace is coming. We know that it's coming. It takes time. This will give hope to people to stay and build their country. When people come to the checkpoints or go to the refugee camps, they always have sympathy about this. But when they come to Rawabi and see we Palestinian, the same people that are living under occupation, we are making our future. We are looking for something different. I feel proud. We are also sending a message to the whole world. If we can build a small town, we can build a big city, and we can build a nation. I want to show the world that when Palestinian people had the opportunity to build a nation, they built a first-class nation. For her vision and commitment to help the people of Palestine build a brighter, better future for themselves, Vital Voices is honored to present the 2013 Economic Empowerment Award to Manal Yais Zrei. Good evening. Allow me to dedicate this award to my country, Palestine, and to every single woman who fights in her own way for peace. On behalf of all of them, I would like to say thank you, Vital Voices, for recognizing us. Tonight, is one of the most memorable events in my whole life. It encourages me. This award is not for what I have done. I see it as a challenge to do more for my country. We all in this together. We all have to build our nation and to build our future. Each one of us have fear, and each one of us have frustration. But we cannot allow it to paralyze us. Keep hope on. There is always hope, and there is always something for each one of us to do for a better future. Thank you. <laughs> 